Here we're going to evaluate what looks like a pretty crazy integral, but it turns out to be a very special case of something that we've done on the channel before. So in particular, we want to find the integral from 0 to 1 of the 2022nd root of 1 minus x to the 2021 minus the 2021st root of 1 minus x to the 2022. So before we get started, I want to notice that really the numbers 2022 and 2021 are not that important in this problem. The only thing that's important is that they are switched. And we'll see that by noticing the following relationship. So let's maybe set f sub a b of x equal to the eighth root of 1 minus x to the bth power. And then I want to find the inverse function of this. Now, of course, you're going to have to restrict the domain and stuff like that, but I'll let you guys worry about that. This type of function is most definitely invertible on the interval from 0 to 1, and that's all we're really worried about. Okay, so how would we find the inverse? Well, I'm going to take just a standard pre-calculus approach, and that is I'll set y equal to f sub a b of x, and then I'll switch x and y, meaning that x is equal to f sub a b of y, and then I'll solve for y, and that'll be my value of f a b inverse. Okay, so that means I've got the eighth root of 1 minus y to the bth power. Now let's raise each of the sides of this equation to the eighth power. That will give us x to the a equals 1 minus y to the b. But that tells us that y to the b is equal to 1 minus x to the a. But that means that y is equal to the b root of 1 minus x to the eighth power. But then let's notice that this is exactly f inverse x a b, but it's also equal to f sub b a of x. So in other words, if we switch these indices here, we invent the inverse function. Well, that means that in our language up here, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of f sub 2022, 2021 of x minus f sub 2021, 2022 of x dx. But that's a little bit gnarly to work with. So let's maybe just introduce a little bit of notation since in our setup, we're only worried about the numbers 2021 and 2022. So I'll maybe take this guy right here and set it equal to f of x. Then I'll take this guy right here and notice that it is f inverse of x. Okay, so that means we're trying to find the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x minus f inverse of x dx. And while we're at it, we probably want to notice some of the special values of f and f inverse. So we'll first notice that f of 0 and f of 1 take on the following values. So f of 0 is 1, and then f of 1 is 0. But then likewise, f inverse of 0 is also 1, and f inverse of 1 is also 0. That's because we've got this kind of symmetric relationship between f and f inverse. So we'll separate this into two integrals and then manipulate the second integral. So I'll have this is the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. And then when I write the second integral, I'm going to replace the dummy variable x with the dummy variable t, just so the substitution means that we can easily combine at the end. So we've got the integral from 0 to 1 of f inverse of t dt. So I didn't change anything from this step to this step. I just split this into two integrals and I changed my variable of integration, just did a swap. Okay, now I'll make a substitution in our second integral. 
And that substitution will be from the t world back to the x world. So I'll take t equal to f of x. That means that dt is equal to f prime of x dx. Okay, that means that f inverse of t is equal to x. Okay, so let's see what that does to our second integral. I'll bring my first integral down, the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx minus the integral of, well now I have x, f prime of x dx. And then what about the bounds of integration? Well, notice when t is equal to 0, x is equal to 1 by this up here. And likewise, when t is equal to 1, x is equal to 0. So I can put a 1 here and a 0 here. But I'd like to change that as quickly as possible. And I can do that by changing this plus minus sign to a plus sign. And that's going to change this back to 0 and 1. Now, looking at this, I've got an integral made up of two parts, x and then f prime dx. But that's one thing that has an easy derivative, x, and one thing that has an easy antiderivative, f prime. So that really screams out that maybe we should use integration by parts at this step. And that's what we'll do. So now let's take u to be x and dv to be f prime of x dx. That means du is equal to dx and v is equal to f of x. Okay, so now let's see what we've got. We've got the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, just bringing that down, and then plus u times v, so that's going to be x times f of x evaluated from 0 to 1, minus the integral of v du, so that's going to be minus the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. But now look at what happens. We've got an integral from f of, x, of f of x from 0 to 1 and then minus the same integral. That's going to cancel. And then this guy right here also zeroes out because f of 1 is 0 and x evaluated at 0 is also 0. So that cancels out. But that's all of the parts canceling out, which means our final answer is 0. And if you look at this, from this stage right here to the end, we didn't use anything about the structure of the function other than these values of the function at its inverse. And in fact, that kind of relationship is something we explored in a previous video. And that's a good place to stop.